seen over the years all the farmers' healths are deteriorating. So we made this positive step that we were going to get away from using synthetic herbic chemicals, herbicides and pesticides. When we first started we only had 0.9% organic matter. Now we're up around 2%. So the system is water, air, biology and the last of all is fertiliser. And now I put them in that order to correct those in that order first. So when I say water, I want water infiltration. So for me to get water infiltration, I would look at my calcium to magnesium ratio in my soil tests and I noticed that I'm low on low in calcium. At the same time, I was using a uh, single time a ripper with a coulter because I just want to lift the soil and put it down. I don't want to mix the soil. And then the third one was putting out biology. So those three all combined together will now increase my water holding capacity. Every time you increase your organic matter by 1%, you increase your watering holding capacity by 170,000 litres. Every rain event. So now on this farm here, we've got our infiltration up to 100 millimetres an hour. So we can have a storm 100 millimetres an hour water won't run off this farm. We get free rain from the air. Nobody looks at that there. They say, how much rain did you have last night? We had 50 mil of rain, but you go out and check. He might only got 10 mil of rain, 40 mil ran off. To me, whenever water runs off my farm, that's, that's money running off my farm. Well, basically, when we look at a soil test, we look at pH, uh, carbon, humus, and the third one is uh, your base saturations, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. We've been liming this paddock for a couple of years there now. We lime every year. And I, I don't lime for the pH. What I lime for is plant available calcium. That's what I'm chasing, plant available calcium. Because all your cation minerals all ride on the back of calcium. And all your anion minerals will ride on the back of phosphorus. So they're the two main ones we, we concentrate on. We had to get contractors in to uh, spread the lime and uh, it was just getting too expensive. This here is, is a belt spreader. It's got a 900 centimetre wide belt. And that's the beauty of this. So this can hook onto any tractor. we has got two sets of remotes. But also on this unit here, we've got an attachment we can bend three rows at a time. It costs about $12,000. You can halve your cost by banding. That's the secret of that. So the first four years we banned everything. Now we're into the system there now and we've building got a lot of roots. We've dropped the banding and gone to the spinners now to get the fertilizer out wider. Now the roots will travel where the fertilizer is now. See this can spread anything. This can spread mill ash, mill mud, lime. At the moment now I'm spreading gypsum and paramatic rock. It's a multi, same thing as that big rig out there. It's a multi-unit thing. You can do three or four different jobs for the same thing. Paramatic rock is all about um, magnetic field. You can increase your biology by threefold by just using paramatic rock. It's the iron, it's so much the iron and there to get the magnetism there and microbes just love it. And we base all our things on a leaf analysis, not a soil analysis. And then you've got your trace minerals. It's a step-by-step -step process. So then you look at leaf analysis, see what minerals are missing, then you apply a foliar fertiliser, and that picks the plant. And that's where you can reduce the cost down to at least half, half your production costs. Well, I think it, economics, we're saving about 20000 a year. And that 20000 we spent building all uh, the spray rigs, everything that we had to need, we had to build ourselves. What we're doing now is using fertilizers that are insoluble, but plant available. That's how you get the cation osmosis, so the plant will draw in the fertilizer. So basically, what we're, we're doing is salting our soils, and that's why our pH is, it keeps dropping down to five and a half. We found once we stopped using synthetic fertilizers and stopped using all that salt, our pH come up to 6.5 to 7 pi, perfect pH. Now this is what, this here is gold. Liquid gold. Have you ever seen compost like that? From the starting point of wood chip and cane trash 
Now it's just turned into beautiful humus topsoil. This is what we're doing now. We're extracting 4,000 different types of microbes there now out of this. But as I said, you can't buy this. You've got to make it. And we're using all the native microbes all around the area. So now they're indigenous to the area there. You can buy compost in from another area, but they're going to compete with your natives and your natives will always win. When you keep your soils in a vegetative state pumping and the plant is pumping exudates into the ground there, that's how you build humus. All those minerals that the mum bee and the soil bee and the joint vench plus another four or five different legumes in that paddock, they released all their minerals. Now the oats sucked up all those minerals into the oats there now. So the oats went for about eight weeks and then after eight weeks then now we shallow and caught the oats into the ground give it three weeks to, uh, for the biology to work and, and um, break all that down and release all those minerals, then we plant our sugar cane. Probably year 2014-15, we done a mass humus course, whereas you're, we were making our own fertiliser. Basically what it is, we were making NPK plus um, trace minerals, and um, all it was, we were using cow paunch or native microbes, we were using synthetic fertilizers and putting a carbon source with them and stabilizing them with a carbon source. So each shuttle is a mineral. So after 30 or 40 days, they're a biological fertilizer. And then so, they can all put into a mother tank to go to the paddock. So basically what we were getting, a synthetic fertilizer, putting microbes with it and chelating it. So now after 30, 40 days, the microbes have chewed up all any mineral that we've put in there. Now it's, the food source is finished, so now they've passed and died away. Now all those minerals are now trapped in their dead bodies. Now all those minerals there now are all plant available, can't be leached, can't be oxidised. They're perfect. And it's a cheap form of fertiliser. We were making a static compost extract. Once you make it, you don't turn it anymore and it's highly fungal. And uh, you let it go for 12 months and in that 12 months you've got bacteria and fungi together and you've also got over 4,000 different types of species of microbes in there. So when we bring the Johnson C bioreactor over to the commercial plant, the trial work up to date is one kilo of the product per hectare. And they're only doing it once or twice, but in our system we can go up to four, four applications. And it's still costing us around three dollars a hectare to do the, the four applications. So we've got the product in here, we've got the rainwater tank there, we just blast it with water to, to get it from the biology out of the basket into the water. We normally fill it up to about 900 litres. In a 20 kilo basket, we might have five kilos left in here of big solids, and the other 15 kilos that we've got there will go in through our rigs and go out through and we just keep it going. We turned a solid product into a liquid product, then we're going to add a food source. So we've got molasses as a food source, and later down the track, you can use fish as a food source. So now they've got a chance to survive out in the paddock. So now we're running bacteria and fungi. So to keep the bacteria going, we can use the molasses. To keep the fungi going, we can use the fish. So we're doing stacking. Combine the two together. Don't keep it separate. People always want to push fungi or push bacteria. It's a system. Put them both together, stack them together, you get bigger results. The fish is 10% nitrogen, so we're getting nitrogen from there as well. It's got phosphorus, potassium. It's got 62 different minerals in the fish. Humic ash is, is beneficial for the microbes. It addresses compaction as well. You'll get rid of compaction with humic acid. Plus, it's also, it's a carbon source. That's the beauty of using compost. We're chasing carbon. Carbon, I can't stress enough carbon. Now the farm has turned and we're heading in a positive direction. We're probably still another two years away from where we want to be. We've made a lot of errors, <laughs> a lot, a lot of errors. I suggest to uh, new farmers that go down this pathway here, 
Just pick one hectare, maybe five hectares that you're comfortable with, and you know you're gonna make mistakes. When you have success, now you'll know how to implement it on the rest of your farm. But uh, it, don't go one hit, whole farm, one go. The hit, it'll be just, you make that one mistake, you'll get so disheartened. But if you make a mistake on one five hectares, so what, you're only gonna cost you a couple of dollars, not thousands of dollars.